Okay, so there we go, oxidation states. So I would hope that by now you've sort of figured out that um, the trend is that metals and what does monoatomic mean? Single they only have one atom. charge. Single, no, single atom, one atom, monoatomic. Anions are often Leo. Okay, they're often going to lose electrons. So, for example, Cl minus loses electrons. That's a monoatomic ion, and it's going to lose electrons. Right? And metals being like sodium, potassium, they're going to lose electrons as well to become Na plus and K plus. Non-metals like Cl2O2 and monoatomic cations like Na plus and K plus are going to gain electrons reduction, which of course are our oxidizing agents, and these of course are our reducing agents. Why is it good to recognize this pattern? Because then you can work faster. Right? then you can work faster, then you can automatically know what, what, what sign. Lindsay, you should be paying attention, not working on your lap. Then you know automatically what side to put the electrons without really thinking about it. Because thinking sometimes takes us longer. So if your impulse is to put it on the right or left, then you can just do it without really thinking about it. Okay? Or if you like, get a little bit confused because it's a test and you get stressed out, then what you should do is you should just find any monoatomic anion, knowing that even if you have N3 minus, which is freaking you out because you've never seen it before, you can kind of copy the same pattern of the Cl minus in your data booklet. Do you get it? So if Cl minus looks like this, Cl negative would go to Cl2, correct? I would need two of them. They would each lose two electrons, so that's, or each lose one electron, I mean, so it's two electrons total that be lost. Now, that was me thinking through it. That took a while. Finding it might take a while. But if you find something else that's a negative ion, you know the electrons are on the right-hand side, you can just copy that. Does that make sense? So finding these trends help you speed up, and speeding up is incredibly important. Because that diploma has a lot of questions on it. It takes you a long time. And so every question you can answer fast, you need to answer fast. So the ones you can't answer fast, you've got the time banked for. And you can spend five minutes on that one question. OK? So polyatomic ions, or complex molecular compounds, are not as straightforward. So for example, SO4 2 minus, or actually, and then O4 minus. Could you do that one on your own? Could you make your own redox half reaction for MnO4 minus and H plus? Excuse the interruption, but could these students please come to the office? Emma McLaughlin, Kristen Genero, and Daria O'Neill. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, so that would be, um, you can look this one up in your data booklet, correct? But let's say you weren't allowed to have your data booklet. Would you be able to make it up on your own? Not yet. But by the end of a couple of these, you're going to be able to make those up on your own. You're going to find out how they got it for the, for the data booklet. So if I give you one that's not in the data booklet, such as one of those maybe, you can make it up on your own. Okay? Or... In fact, I don't think there are any molecular compounds. Whereas, you know, CH3, CH2OH, ethanol, <coughs> undergoes oxidation. What's its half reaction? It's not in the data booklet. So we've got to assign oxidation numbers or oxidation states to these atoms so that we can sort out what its half reaction is going to be. Okay? That's where we're going with this topic. So uh, a system has been developed to keep track of which element within the complex. Ooh, hello. Let's go to Peter. Um, 
A system is developed to keep track of which element within the complex compound is actually losing or gaining electrons. Okay? So which atom is it in ethanol that's going to gain or lose the electrons? Every element is assigned an oxidation state. This simply means that we keep track of the electrons. It does not represent an actual charge, but it's going to feel a lot like we're talking about ions. Okay? Because the oxidation state on Na plus is 1 plus. And the oxygen state on O2 minus is 2 minus. So it's going to feel a lot like we're talking about ions, but I need you to understand, because a lot of my chem 20s do not understand, that CH3, CH2, OH has absolutely zero ions in it. Do you understand that? Every single one of these is a neutral atom. No ions. But we're going to assign a charge to it as if it was an ion. Because in that covalent bond, you should probably know, like for example, this carbon, oxygen, hydrogen bond looks like this, right? And you should know that there's an electronegativity difference in these, of which this shared pair is not evenly shared. Did you know that? Electronegativity means the affinity for electrons. There are numbers on the data booklet. Uh, fluorine has the highest electronegativity. Okay, so this means this pair of electrons isn't shared evenly. And I think I was talking about this with you earlier. And I said to you that this is like when you're sharing the back seat with your brother or sister and mom gives you one chocolate bar to share and somebody always takes a bigger bite of the chocolate bar and then shares the other half, but it's not a half, right? Very rarely do you share it perfectly. Gosh, this class is full of interruptions today. Not your fault. Okay, so if that pair, shared pair of electrons is held closer to oxygen, because oxygen has a greater affinity. So this means that this shared pair isn't perfectly shared, but rather, if this was like a weigh scale that they use in like, you know, when you go to the nurse, those old-fashioned weigh scales where they shift that big block of metal to the side. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. This would tip this way, wouldn't it? And similarly, this is shared this way. That tips that way. Okay, so oxygen has more electronegativity around it. So if this shared pair is more like a cloud, imagine me blowing this cloud this way, blowing this shared pair cloud that way, and what happens is this cloud here gets quite dense, and this cloud here gets very thin. So this becomes relatively negative. Do you remember these symbols from Chem 20? Up on that end, making it a polar molecule. OK, so what's the point of this? The point of this is that oxygen is going to have more electronegativity. Therefore, we give it a more negative oxidation number. But it's not charged. This is not O2 minus but it has two electrons kind of near it, more than the other ones. Okay, so oxidation numbers are based on electronegativity, which talks about the unfairly shared pair of electrons between it. Remember that? Remember calculating electronegativity differences from the data booklet in Chem 20? Vaguely? Hello out there? All right, so let's just get to the point. Oh, no, an oxidation number is a positive or negative number assigned to an atom. It's the same thing as an oxidation state. Okay, so if I ask you both those words, you need to be able to recognize them on a quiz. If I say, what is the oxidation state? It's the same thing as oxidation number. Okay, so assuming that it has to do with electronegativity, I've defined it there for you to remind you. All right, so let's jump to the point. There are rules you have to follow when you're doing these oxidation numbers, okay? And these numbers, I think I've given you the rules twice. They're slightly different. They're slightly different? Yeah. I must have summarized it. I like these ones. Let's go to these ones. Rules for assigning oxidation numbers. First of all, when you have a compound, when 
as you're calculating the oxidation numbers, they have to add up to the charge of that compound. Okay? So all my oxidation numbers after in water, once I figure out the oxidation number of hydrogen and the oxidation number of oxygen, they have to add up to give me a total charge of zero because water has a total charge of zero. Okay? When I look for phosphorus, when I figured out the number of phosphorus and I figured out the number for four oxygens, that total, adding those up, should equal negative three. Do you get it? Okay, so now we have to figure out how to figure out those numbers then, which we need to add up to get negative three. So number two, all elements, chlorine, iron, whatever, every element has a charge of, an oxidation number, I mean, of zero. It also has a charge of zero, but it has the oxidation number of zero, okay? Third rule, fluorine, because it has the highest electronegativity, is all, always has first call on the, electro, on the um, oxidation number of negative one. Okay? Group one, so lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, is always one plus, I should probably say ions. Group one, ions. Will you change that, please? Group one, ions. Shall I plus and plus? R, always one plus. Group two, if you have something that's in group two, ion is always plus two. And you follow them in this order. You do your Fs, then you do group one's numbers, then you do group two numbers, then you do your H numbers. So H is always plus one, unless it comes with a group one or group two, because we've already done that one. So for example, NaH. These rules tell us that I have to do Na first because it's a group one ion. Everybody get that? Because it came first in our list. There's no F, there is a group one. Group one ions are always one plus, so this becomes one plus. Na is one plus in this compound. And the whole thing has to total zero because it's a neutral compound, so therefore F H has to be one minus in order to equal zero, to add up to equal zero. Did you get it? Why did I do Na plus first? Because it's more important, it comes first on our rules. Normally H is one plus though. So for example, in water, there, so H2O, there's no F, there's no group one, there's no group two, so I'm starting here with my H's. And the H's are one plus. So one plus, oops. And how many H's have I got? Two of them, so that's two plus in total. And therefore that has to equal plus something, has to equal zero because it's a neutral compound. So what must oxygen be then? Negative two. So hydrogen is positive one. I have two hydrogens, so that's positive two in total. The whole thing has to equal zero, so this is negative two. Okay, Daria? So this is just telling me which one to look at first, and then that helps you determine what the other... Um, oxidation numbers are okay. for all of them. Okay. Evan? Um, so were you distracted by your phone there for a minute as you were thinking of your question? No Sorry. need to look. Yeah. Um, uh, so when you got the hydrogen oxidation number of plus two and plus one, would hydrogen of plus one, plus one. So yeah. the oxidation number would be plus one. The plus two is just in two, of them. two of so them. So okay. in total, I have a charge of two plus. So remember, water looks like this. So this is one plus. This is one plus. This is now two minus. So that the whole thing is neutral. Okay. Does that oxygen have a two minus charge? No. no. It has a two minus oxidation number. They're different, but actually in kind of while you're doing them, doesn't oxygen always have a two minus? So therefore that's a gut feeling anyway, so we'd probably put two minus, and hydrogen's always on plus anyway. That's a gut feeling, so we put that anyway. So it is very similar to our charges. 
So you should always already have a feeling for these, but make no mistake, by definition they are not charges. This is not a charged molecule. These aren't ions. Okay? Right, and then next we do oxygen. It's a two minus unless it has F first. So for example, OF2, what would we do first? We do fluorine first. So what did we say fluorine was? Minus one. Minus one. How many of them I, do I have? Two. I have two. So what does that leave for my oxygen? Plus two. Plus two. Now that's weird, isn't it? Plus two. And because that's weird, because that's weird, memorize that one. Or re memorize that that one's going to be weird. You don't have to memorize how you do it because you just fill it out. But you know what I mean? So that when you go, well, that's weird, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that one from before. Hydrogen peroxide, another weird one. We're going to do which first? Hydrogen. Hydrogens, because they come here. I don't have F, I don't have group one, I don't have group two, but I have hydrogens. So I'm going to do my hydrogens first. So that's hydrogen is given plus one. plus one. How many of them do I have? Two. two. So that's in, to in total, I have two pluses. In total, this whole thing has to equal zero, so I must have this column be negative two. Do you get that? And I have how many oxygens in there? Two. So each oxygen must have negative one. negative one. So oxidation state of oxygen is negative one, and the oxygen state of hydrogen is positive one. Again, memorize, oh yeah, hydrogen peroxide, that's a weird one. So when you come up with it, you're okay with oxygen being minus one. And then group 17 is negative one, unless it's an F compound like that. And I've got another example there for you. Okay, so these seem at the moment like a lot of rules, okay? And you will need to refer to these rules at first. But by the end of that sheet, you should have a feeling for these numbers and not have to go back anymore, okay? So it's not about memorizing these rules, although you can, you can memorize them and you could write them down somewhere and follow the rules every time, you wouldn't make a mistake. But the idea is that initially you follow the rules and within 20 problems or so, you kind of just get the feeling for it. Okay? You get how to do it without having to look at the rules. Evan, and then we're going to go to this example. Um, in the earlier set of rules, you also have it said that um, for all monatomic ions, like Na plus or S2 minus, the oxidation number is the charge on the ion. That's true. Okay, that's right. Okay. But that still flips in with the rules. So. Yeah. Okay, so here we've got MnO4 minus. Overall, this whole thing has to t total negative one. Everybody okay with that? Why negative one? Why negative one? Because the charge is negative one. Because the charge of the whole compound is negative one, so all my oxidation numbers have to add up to give me negative one. Okay, where do I start? Mn? Was that in any of my rules? No. no. Do I even have to look for my rules? Did you notice that all the rules had to do with the outside of the periodic table? The outside edges? The inside didn't have any rules. Mn is in the inside. So where am I going to start? My oxygen. Not because I have to look up the rules, but because it's the only place to logically start. Do you sort of get what I mean by the flavor? And oxygen is always given what number? Negative two. Negative two, unless it's one of the weird ones, right? So here we go, negative two. And how many oxygens have I got? Four. Four, so that makes a total of negative eight. So what must, what must my MN be? Seven. Positive seven. So it doesn't always equal zero, it equals the charge of the overall. Right, yes, yeah, you messed up it. In your class change. Got it? Your homework is to finish that lab data and calculations. And then you're, everybody will be in the same spot tomorrow. Ooh, those of you that aren't here tomorrow, you'll have to do those oxidation numbers. What about Friday as well? Friday, check Moodle.